Sweden is experiencing a surprising surge in gun violence and shootings, leaving everyone puzzled. Prime Minister Ulf Christensen says this is a situation that Europe has never encountered before, leaving us all scratching our heads. The combination of lax asylum laws and a crazy high influx of new arrivals has contributed to the increase in gang violence and the struggle to integrate immigrants. This whole situation is a hot mess of terrible mixing, sketchy dealings and shady shenanigans. The influx of humanitarian migrants in 2015 resulted in a significant portion of the Swedish population being from non-native backgrounds, many of whom found themselves in less than desirable neighbourhoods struggling to find their place. Immigrants living in poverty and relying on government assistance became a prime target for questionable activities, setting off a new wave of craziness. In other words, Sweden is currently dealing with a real-life episode of Gang Wars, Swedish edition. Alright, so here's the scoop on how this whole swarm of people ended up here. Asylum seekers increased in Sweden in the 1980s, mostly from South American nations as well as Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, Eritrea and Somalia. Several Chileans, among others, made the decision to migrate to Sweden amid the government of Augusto Pinochet, which lasted from 1973 to 1990. Almost none of them went back to Chile following Pinochet's fall in 1990. With about 45,000 residents, Sweden is currently home to the third largest Chilean community outside of Chile, behind Argentina and the US. Flow of immigrants didn't stop there. According to the Geneva Convention, Around 7,000 Iraqis and 27,000 Iranians were awarded residency cards in Sweden as refugees during the 1980-1989 Iraq-Iran War. On top of that, another wave of Iraqis fleeing to Sweden as a result of the 2003 invasion of their country. Are we done? Unfortunately, no. The Balkan Wars in the 1990s led to a large influx of immigrants to Sweden from the former Yugoslavia. Soon after, during the 2000s, Sweden opened its borders to other EU members in 2001, when it joined the Schengen Cooperation. This resulted in an influx of EU nationals into the nation. In the 2000s, some 29,000 individuals from nations outside of the European Union and the European Economic Area relocated to Sweden in search of employment. Today, a large number of international workers, particularly in the ICT sector, migrate to Sweden in search of profitable job possibilities due to the country's flourishing startup and technology industry, with work ranking as the primary motivation for migration. So, Sweden has a long tradition of taking in refugees from areas of ongoing conflict, but what happened in 2015 was crazy. A record of 162,877 persons applied for asylum in Sweden in 2015. That's huge! The Syrian civil war was the primary cause of the 2015 high, but a sizable portion of the population also originated from Afghanistan and Iraq. Actually, between 2015 and 2018, more than 60,000 Syrians were asylum applicants in Sweden, and more than 40,000 from Afghanistan. Now that you know the path that led to this boom of asylum seekers and migrants in Sweden, you must be wondering how and why this affected violence rates. But before we go into it, if you like this video so far, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Sweden has the terrible unique feature of being the country in Europe with the highest rates of gangland killings. With kids in their early teens getting arrested for murder, it has the lowest average age of serious offenders. Unbelievable! Authorities claim that gangs are increasingly recruiting youngsters and young people. Research indicates that suspects in gang-related crimes such as murder, manslaughter and lethal assault are becoming younger. 15 to 20 year olds accounted for 23% of all suspects in these types of crimes in 2012. By 2022, that percentage had increased to 45%. Things don't just stop here. An increasing number of suburbs are designated by the government as especially vulnerable areas, but police operations are hard. Put simply, these are no-go areas governed by the local groups, into which first responders won't go unless they are accompanied by police who have flak jackets on. Can you believe that Sweden has one of the highest gun death rates per capita of any European country? When US President Donald Trump joked about violence in Sweden in 2017, it served as an early warning. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Who would have guessed that in Sweden? Such remarks were mocked and treated with dislike at the time. It's not exactly as funny now. Sweden has shifted from being an inspirational model to a frightening story. Growing concerns among its Scandinavian neighbours are that they may fall victim to what is described in Denmark as the Swedish condition, as gangland violence continues to expand internationally. The Swedish government has called on the military to support the police, breaking a long-standing taboo. 
The increasing gang violence has gotten so out of hand that even the governor of the Bank of Sweden is worried about the nation's economic future. It's not just a joke. Central bank governors don't throw words around willy-nilly. So, here's a burning question. How is this massive influx impacting Sweden's economy in other ways? Let me tell you a fact that worries experts a lot. Swedish nationals with entrepreneurial skills are fleeing the country as physical security deteriorates. The industry is finding it harder and harder to attract the best workers from abroad. These issues are made worse by a decline in educational quality brought on by an increase in ethnic tension and direct harm in schools. Sweden's standing in the Program for International Student Assessment student rankings is declining, according to the OECD. It seems like things are going from bad to worse in Sweden. But do you think this is the only problem with the crazy number of people going to Sweden? Of course not. We should be talking about the fiscal dimension. As it turns out, and this should come as no surprise, migrants were significantly overrepresented in certain areas of public spending. The most striking example is that they made up 55% of social assistance expenditure, despite only comprising 5.1% of the population, while only 3.3% of the general population received social assistance. A whopping 17% of refugees did. However, when it came to bigger budget items like pensions, healthcare and education, refugees were actually underrepresented. They seemed to be mostly concentrated in the 20 to 59 age group, leaving the older folks to enjoy those benefits. In all, the social welfare benefits that foreign-born households and Swedish-born households in Sweden have received have diverged during the last 10 years. When it comes to bringing in the dough, they didn't quite hit the jackpot like the rest of the population, only chipping in around 3.4% of the total public revenue. This was mainly from their contributions in payroll and direct taxes. The reason for this? Well, it seems that adult refugees had a lower employment rate compared to the average adult. Blame it on low female labour force participation, not so great language skills, a lack of proper training and a few other factors. This is a severe issue for a knowledge-based nation, and the central bank is not alone in sounding the alarm. For a while now, there have been growing alarms, and the ruling class has now finally begun giving up its long-standing denial. One issue is that very few people, if any, appear to know what can be done. The whole come-one-come-all immigration policy without any support for newbies is like throwing a party without any snacks, a recipe for disaster. Now we've got neighbours full of immigrants who can't find jobs, can't speak Swedish, and can't even find someone to teach them. It's like a bad game of hide-and-seek where the gangs are winning because society forgot to show up. So after listing all the wacky ways these migrants are impacting Sweden's economy, you're probably thinking, what's next? How do we fix this mess? Sweden's population has already exceeded prior estimates by more than 500,000, resulting in a major alteration in the country's demographic composition. As the huge 40-something generation grew older, the prior forecast indicated a fairly sharp increase in the number of older people which would increase the burden of reliance on those who are still in the workforce. But, it turns out migration is doing miracles for the economy of Sweden, since this demographic situation isn't going to come to pass. So, there is no longer a scarcity of persons in working age, as was formerly thought. But in order to benefit from this, the government should organise society in a way that fully integrates the large working age population in the labour market. Now let me tell you an amazing fact. Can you believe that if this crazy influx of people didn't occur, Sweden's yearly growth rate would have been 0.5% less than it is today, as per the projections? Another point that I can't end this video without mentioning is that the Swedish government's policy of allowing the nation to accept more refugees per capita than any other in Europe contributed to a decrease in unemployment rates. Also, this course of action helped the largest economy in the Nordic region to expand by 4.5% annually. This is its highest growth rate in over five years, and more than double Germany's growth. But integrating those newcomers into society isn't easy. In fact, jobs and reasonably priced houses are in dire need. Many refugees who have a legally recognised right to remain become passive because they are unable to find a permanent place to live or work. The government recently unveiled several new integration initiatives and investments in new home construction. In certain areas, Pilot programs have been launched to evaluate recently arrived asylum seekers' qualifications promptly and to provide them with internships and additional education to help them find employment in the public sector where more workers are needed, particularly in hospitals and retirement homes. To sum up, the last uncommon point on which everyone agrees is that there are no shortcuts to solving Sweden's gang problem. It will take time to improve integration, keep more kids in risky neighbourhoods in school and expel gang members from the welfare state. Local leaders believe that maintaining law and order is only a portion of the answer. 
schools in particular play a major role in providing a significant part of the solution. Also, the government needs to take action on recruitment if they are to truly turn things around. It involves taking action now with three-year-olds to prevent them from obtaining a gun in 10 years. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to receive more content. See you in the next video.